Assault Fang. This is the biggest and heaviest Baofeng radio that I've ever seen. This is a Baofeng UV-25. Now, a few years ago, I did a video about a Lyxan. I don't even remember the number on that. VV-898, something like that. It was a single band, mono band. I think it was 440 only, and it was very heavy duty. Probably almost the size of this. Look, here's my smartphone. This is as big as my smartphone is, and it's a heck of a lot thicker than my smartphone. In fact, this is my Z Fold phone. See how big that is. This thing's heavy. It's got this bendable antenna like this right there, and it looks like it transmits on the 220 megahertz, or at least when I turn it on, it was on 462.225 on the bottom, which it transmits there and it was on 258.925 on the top, and it transmits there. Full open transmit. I got this on Amazon. I will put a link in the description below. I wanted to go through it, though, and then I'm going to go outside and throw it up in the air and see if it survives a fall test onto the concrete street. That's going to be fun. So this is the... this going around it, everything. Everything... It, it basically came with the antenna here. It came with this cable here that's USB-C on this end and a wall socket, so you can plug that in. And then it's got this pretty large belt clip on it right there it does have a place on the back for a belt clip on the radio itself not on the battery so that's good here's the uh charging port on the back of the battery usb-c right there looks like it's got something down here to put a cradle onto it didn't come with the cradle and it's got these two screws on the corners down here presumably that can you can attach something to that i don't know what that is it didn't come with that but that's that's where we're at right there so on this side of the radio you've got the push to talk button it looks like this is a minus and a plus up down buttons and then this button right here looks like that turns on uh, the weather channels. You press this button right here. There's that one. Okay, that one's close to me. The display itself is probably not any bigger than the 5M. Here's the 5M that I did a while back. Yeah, the displays are about the same. But the rest of the body is pretty good. It's got some really big buttons that are easy to see. Got your menu there, your standard menu for the newest, uh, newest version of Fang. Firmware 0.10. 7.4 volts. It is a tri-band. It claims to be a tri-band. 136 to 174, 220 to 260, and 400 to 520. So it'll go to 520 for those of you asking that. This is a 2800 milliamp hour battery, 20.72 watt hours. Honestly, 2800 milliamp hours for that, I would have expected more. The size and weight of this, it should be higher capacity than that. The standard battery now on the Anytone radios is about 3100 milliamp hours, and that's it's about half the size of this thing. So they could easily make this like a five or six thousand milliamp hour battery if they wanted to okay i tighten those down with the screwdriver you have to tighten them down pretty well but then it creates a pretty good seal along here which i assume is probably waterproof because i think this thing's like ip67 or maybe even ip68 rated so it's got this control knob on the top here that's protected that's your power and uh, volume button right there the flashlight up there the mic and the speaker over here on is on this very large flap behind it but the but the proportions on the Kenwood K style connector there are the same as any other radio this button right here is a flashlight I pressed it when I pressed down on that and it's got a screw on the side there I'm not sure what that's for but okay so this antenna is, is kind of unique it's uh, heavy by itself it's got an SMA male on the body and a female on the antenna it's got a bend to it where you can bend it in different directions and kind of fix it how you want it like that so flexible antenna Want to put this on the tiny SA and see what happens. So we've got the frequency mode here, VFO 146.520. I'm going to go down to the bottom band and change it. It's still in memory mode. Long pressing the green button changes it from VFO to frequency mode. Change that one to 223.500. Now we're going to set up the tiny SA. I'm going to go to uh, measure harmonic 146.52 times 1 times 1. Yeah. Level minus 40 times 1. All right, now, here we go. Someone said in a previous video that there was a harmonic on the edge of the tiny SA without me keying up, and I guess that's what they were talking about. So going through the DBM attenuator right there. And you know what? I'm going to tra change this because I think it's on high power. I don't want to do it on high power. I want to do it on middle power like that. And then I'm going to go, yeah, medium power there, 146.52. So number one harmonic is 146.52, which is where we're supposed to be. Number two is at around 293, and you can see how high it is. It's at negative 20. There's zero, right? Zero is right here. Negative 20 is right there. Okay. So it's still dirty frequency, the way we're used to seeing on fangs. 
And now I'm going to switch it over here to 220. Because this is supposed to be a tri-band radio. And now we're going to key up there. 223.5, which is the FM calling frequency for 220 simplex or 1.25 meter simplex. So you got a little bit of... Uh, so that number one looks good. You got a little bit of a harmonic right there around... Um, like, I guess that'd be 446 right there. But it's at like negative... Oh, now it disappeared. So that might actually be okay. That harmonic kind of pops up and down there. It's down here at like negative 20. So it's not, it's supposed to be at negative 40 or less. So it's not quite as low as it should be, but it pops up and pop and goes away. So it's not that bad, I don't think. So better on 220 than it is on two meters for sure. So two meters is dirty as we expected it would be. 220 actually looks pretty good. And in a minute, I'm going to test 440. I might do the 440 and the 460 band for GMRS users. But I'll, first, I wanted to tell you that today's video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. Head over to PCBWay.com to get all of your project ideas come to life. They do custom CNC machine printing, custom 3D printing, professional grade 3D printing, and they print all kinds of circuit boards, both standard and flexible circuit boards and many other different styles. So head over to PCBWay.com and tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you and thank them for sponsoring this channel. So I suspect that 440 is going to look just fine. Let's go to 446. Actually, let's go to 441. Zero, zero, zero. And then still on mid power, so I'm going to key up here. We actually have a second harmonic that's worse here than it is on the 220 band. 441.0 here. We've got an eighth harmonic up here at 2.98 gigahertz. And then we got the second harmonic there. And that, now that's, this one down here is at like negative 20. This one, the second harmonic's at like negative 10. Not great. Pretty much dirty fang the way that you would expect dirty fangs to be. They're just not good on harmonics. They got a lot of spurious emissions. They splatter all over the place. They're going to interfere with other electronic equipment if you get too close to them, especially this one that's supposed to do like 10 watts, I think. I believe this is a 10 watt radio. Yes, this radio is advertised at 10 watts. So I guess I could put it on the meter and see what it's doing. But uh, I think the tiny SA tests are more relevant and i think you guys like it more because i get a lot of good, really good feedback about the tiny sa tests of that so you want to see me throw this thing up in the air and see if it survives hitting the street and that sounds pretty good right there but when i was in the shack i tried to key up that repeater and uh, and i keyed it up wasn't a problem but the descents on this thing is terrible it was picking up all kinds of rf interference just listening to that 440.900 repeater so i come out of the shack and apparently i've got some rfi in the shack which i already knew that that's cool but I've used hundreds of HTs in the shack and never heard a descent as badly as what this thing was picking up. KC5 HWB testing. That's the Euless repeater, 442.900. If I'm driving around town in the North Texas area, that's usually the repeater, one of the repeaters I'm monitoring. So if you guys are in town in this area, feel free to drop by and say hello on that repeater. All right, I'm going to take the antenna off. I don't want to break the antenna. Well, <laughs> I don't want to break any of it. But I'm curious to see how well this does. So check this out. Watch this. I threw it the second time I threw it, I threw it towards the camera, and the camera must have got scared and fell. So both times it landed right, it must be top heavy. Both times it landed right there on top of the protector going over the volume slash power knob. An ant just bit me in my foot. But now it won't power on. Not powering on. Not uh the, the knob is a lot tighter now because this thing is pressed down on top of it. I don't know if I could fix that or not, but probably not worth it. So not really that impact proof. I thought it would be more impact proof than that. Maybe I should have dunked it in a bucket of water instead, but it's not powering on now. Something about it landed on top of that knob, which again is the heaviest part. I threw it up in two different directions and each time it came down right on top of that knob and now it won't power on. So there you go. There's a test of the uh, Fang UV-25.